Hello, I'm Matthew Smith, one of the librarians here at UEA, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Web of Science. To access Web of Science, go to my.uea.ac.uk and select Explore My Library. From here, click on A to Z Databases and then W and select Web of Science. You'll then need to click on the Access Now button after which you should be dropped into the Web of Science interface. The first page will have a search function on it, and hopefully this will do for most of your searches. So let's set up a simple search to look for papers that deal with COVID and Norfolk. I'll put each term in a separate line, and then from the range of fields available to me, I'll select the title field, and I'll do this with both lines. If I then click search, I should see any papers in Web of Science which have both COVID and Norfolk in their title. And we can see that there are three. Now, it may be that I want to put terms in individually and then combine them together after the fact. This will really help in seeing which of my terms are working most efficiently. To do this, all we'll do is run each term individually so first COVID in the title, and then replace the text in the search box with Norfolk, and run the search again. Once I've run the individual terms, I'll go back to the search function, but this time I'll click on the advanced search option down the page. From here, I should be able to see a history of the searches that I've made during the current session. To combine multiple lines together, all I'll do is tick the appropriate lines and then use the drop down at the top of the history to select either AND or OR. In this case, we're going to use AND. This will then place my terms into the box above and all I'll need to do then is click search. And here we see the same three papers that we had for our initial search. So both methods of searching will generate the same set of results, but one allows you to see in slightly more detail how each line of your search is working. We can also filter our search from the left-hand side of our results should we want to, or we can click Analyze Results to see a breakdown of the results we have in our list currently. Now, because we only have three in this example, we're not going to see anything startling, but it's useful to know that you can do this, particularly for bigger pools of papers. You can view the data in different forms, and there are a number of categories that you can look at. For example, we might look at the funding agencies that supported the three records we've seen here, and then focus on the one that was funded by UEA. And here we go. This is the paper that, according to Web of Science, was funded by the UEA. You can also clear any filters you've added from just beneath your search box. Now, if you've run a search and you're happy with it and want to save it, you'll first need a Web of Science account. In the top right hand corner, you'll see that I'm already logged in. And if you don't have a Web of Science account already, all you'll need to do is register using your own preferred details. Once you've done that, click on the Create Alert option next to your search box, or go into the history that's displayed at the top of the screen and select the line of the search that you wish to save, clicking the bell icon to create an alert. Now alerts can be used to send regular updates on papers that have been retrieved since your search. For me, I only want to save this as a search I can come back to, so I'll uncheck the box that would normally generate emails. Having saved my search, if I click on the alerts option from the menu at the top of the page, I can then see any searches that I have saved, and if I want to rerun one, all I'll do is click the rerun search button. You can also look at the further options, so if you did decide that you wanted regular emails telling you any new records that have been retrieved from your search, you can activate this after initially setting up the saved search. If you'd like to save papers from your search, you can select them individually by using the tick boxes on each line, 
or by selecting the checkbox at the very top. Once you've done this, you may choose to add these to a list that are then saved within your Web of Science account. To do this, all you'll do is click Add to List, and you can then either add it to an unfiled collection of records or create a list specifically for those records. The other thing you may want to do is export the records out into a different platform. You've got the option to export to Excel, which is great if you just want a quick solution. But if you're looking to export to a reference manager, say EndNote or maybe upload online somewhere like Covidence, then the RIS file format, the RIS, is the best file format for you to pick. Now you'll see that you can only export 1000 records at a time, and should you need to export more than this, you would need to type in 1 to 1000 in the records from option, export all of those, and then come back and type in records 1001 to 2000, and so on until you'd completed downloading all of your records. You also have the option to determine how much information is pulled on each record. So here I'll set this to full record so that I get all the information. Once I've done this, all I'll do is click export and a file will be generated which is saved to my local computer. So I hope this video has been helpful. These are some of the key functions for Web of Science. But of course, if you have other questions that you'd like to discuss with a librarian, do get in touch with us at the library.